the reason we're at the Rijksmuseum today is we're hosted by KPN with our executive students in sustainability leadership, learning about how to apply sustainability uh, in leading ways. Uh, we're spending the whole week in the Netherlands and today getting to see how specifically KPN is doing that uh, within a country that is really at the forefront of that topic. When we think of what can be done better, uh, uh, part of it is to understand what we've done already uh, and why, and then look at where, where are the gaps. So the vision that we have for KPN is to actually reframe how you look at sustainability, change the lens. So instead of how can technology help society, how can you change society with technology? The continued focus should be on looking at the global trends that affect everyone. Uh, as, as related to climate change, food security, uh, privacy and internet security, uh, robust and future-proof networks. I think that KPN's already doing an amazing amount of good work in those areas and they should continue to uh, keep abreast of the current trends. We've not always been good at telling the story and engaging the broader public in terms of what we could do better and really get their voice in and it's it's exciting to see how KPN is very committed to this concept of dialogue and engagement with its employees and its customers and its broader community. Hello and welcome. My name is Jennifer Griffin and I'm the Program Advisor to the Executive Master of Sustainability Leadership, EMSL for short, at Arizona State University. Today, we're lucky to be joined by EMSL faculty member Bruno Sarda, who is also the Director of Sustainability Operations at Dell, and Michael Harrod. Mike is a graduate of our first cohort who is president and founder of Invisible Footprint, which is a benefit corporation. We're here today to tell you the unique story behind EMSL. For the next 30 to 40 minutes, we'll share with you what EMSL is, how it came about, and how it can help enhance your career. After the presentation, we will answer your questions, so please feel free to begin submitting your questions at any time in the chat window, and we'll get them in a queue to answer after the presentation. As I mentioned, Bruno Sarda is joining us today. Bruno, can you give us some context as to how EMS ASU and how what you do at ASU and Dell led to the creation of EMSL? Sure. Uh, well, hi, everybody. Um, so, you know, I'm obviously in the, in the practice of sustainability, and when I started getting exposed to what ASU does with sustainability, it was very refreshing to discover that it was uh, really how to bring the best of scientific academic thinking in the space of sustainability to the service of those actually doing the work, whether it was in, in corporations like mine or in, in government, in municipalities, etc. And um, so I think that was very interesting. You know, my role at Dell is really about the kind of the, the application of sustainability, the business management, the business strategy of sustainability, making it work within the context of what we do as a core business of how we bring our products and solutions to market in a more sustainable way and in ways that help our customers become more sustainable through technology. So I think there was a, there was a natural fit there and, and why Dell has been partnering with, with ASU now for a few years. Where this degree specifically caught my interest and why I wanted to be involved with it is, um, you know, overwhelmingly what we find is that there's no lack of goodwill. There are a lot of organizations, a lot of individuals within organizations who are really trying to embrace sustainability and more sustainable practices, more sustainable materials, more sustainable pathways to market, um, but they, they often get stuck in the how. Um, you know, and many can start small programs, pilots, proof of concepts, you know, small steps, but they often stall because of this lack of um, integration, this lack of how do you take this to scale, how do you take this in a more meaningful way, and that's really what this program is about. It's really aimed at those who are interested in leading transformative change through the lens of sustainability, and uh, and I think we've we've been successful at doing that. Thanks, Bruno. 
I understand that you partnered with the GreenBiz team to survey hundreds of sustainability business leaders before you and the other faculty members created this degree program. What particular needs did you identify in your research and in your own career, and how does this curriculum address those needs? Yeah, you know, we were we were fortunate to uh, uh, to to be able to partner with GreenBiz. And those of you who don't know GreenBiz, uh, great outfit. You can find them at GreenBiz.com. They they provide a lot of really good uh, content on what's happening in the field of sustainability, especially the intersection between kind of the the the, the, the science and the practice of sustainability. Um, you know, what we found, Jennifer, was that. Um, Again, at the end of the day, when sustainability happens, and when you look at organizations that have been hailed and praised for their sustainability success, what you find is you find some very um, uh, specific skill sets and some specific uh, people attached to those skill sets inside of those organizations. These are people, again, who know how to lead and manage, you know, who know how to talk about sustainability with enough understanding of the subject matter without getting too caught in the in the in the weeds if you will who understand how to wrap it into strategy who understand how to communicate it to their leadership to their organization to their stakeholders to their employee base to really inspire them to to act and follow and to embrace new ways of doing things um, you know who know how to think in broader systems um, and so, you know, when you see how ultimately the uh, the curriculum came together for this course, uh, which I think we'll touch on in a little bit, it, it was really informed by, you know, how do we uh, how do we create many more, you know, very effective sustainability leaders who are not leading for sustainability but leading through sustainability to achieve, um, you know, uh, uh, more sustainable outcomes in the pursuit of that organization's mission. Now, Mike, you got to learn this firsthand because you were actually a student in our first cohort, and now you're actually um, in the in the real world uh, applying this stuff. Uh, and you probably have a, a, your own perspective on this. What uh, uh, what would you have to say about this? I do, I do, and and thank you so much, Jennifer and Bruno, for um, bringing me into this this call today. You know. When I looked into the EMSL, I, 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 I knew I wanted more than, than a traditional graduate program because I'm not a very traditional person when it comes to how I think and how I operate. And, and, you know, and I knew a, a MBA just wasn't for me because I, I felt there was, just, there was enough of them in the market, but yet I wasn't seeing the kind of change that I wanted to see within my organization and ultimately the future organization I would support. And what really drew me to the EMSL program is I wanted something short. You know, I wanted something that would give me the tools to make the changes, but I also wanted a program that would challenge me. And the EMSL program challenged me um, both on my knowledge base, but also exposed me to some internal opportunities for increased performance. You know, I, I really entered the program thinking I knew enough, you know, because I'd been in the industry for a while. I had an undergrad in it. And honestly, I was wrong. I mean, I was like an elephant in an operating room, but this program taught me to be a surgeon. And I really left the program prepared to really hit the job market um, you know, very fast, very equipped to really enact lasting changes within my organization and future organizations. And that's all because of the UMSL program. Thanks so much, Mike. Bruno, can you walk us through the structure of the program with a quick explanation of what students learn in each? Yeah, so, you know, as, as Mike already hinted at, um, this is not your traditional graduate program, um, you know, part of what we did along with the work with GreenBiz was to really do a, a, an assessment of kind of what's out there and what can we learn from what's being done really well. But what we found was, you know, mostly the choices were either, you know, let's call them kind of green MBAs, right? So and there's a lot of good programs out there offered by business schools, which are basically MBAs where the, you know, the backdrop, if you will, the theme uh, can be sustainability, but what is being taught is still kind of core, you know, whatever it's, you know, marketing, accounting, statistics, management, etc. cetera. Um, and then you have, you know, other programs, again, that are very good, including some at ASU that really teach you about the science of sustainability, you know, whether it's environmental science or ecosystems, energy systems, etc. 
But that's really not what this is. This is about um, taking those who are either already in a profession or looking to get into uh, maybe a, a career change or into a specific profession and really t built a curriculum about, again, as I mentioned earlier, about the hows. And so based on everything we learned from what we heard from stakeholders, from the respondents to the GreenVis survey, from our own observations as to kind of what works and what are the qualities of really effective leaders, not just in sustainability, but overall, you know, we really built these four pillars, what we call threads, um, that are really the, uh, the four swim lanes of the curriculum and the program. And one is the global context of sustainability. That's what I teach. So this is all about kind of what's out there, why does it matter, how do you make sense of it, how does your organization even start thinking about what it does in response to this context, how does it find both risk and, and opportunities, etc. The strategy domain is really about how do you incorporate um, anything from systems thinking to strategic thinking to, to strategic planning and tools to the, the, the movement and the preparation and the conceptualization of these sustainability programs in your organization. You know, ultimately, these things are going to work if they fit within your organizational construct, whether you're a city, a nonprofit, a university, or a large corporation, or a small business. It has to fit within the mission and the construct and the culture of your organization. So strategy really gives you both the, um, the, the mindsets and the tools necessary to do that. Um, leadership, again, at the end of the day, the difference between those who want to see change happen and those who make change happen are really found in their leadership capabilities. Those who are really successful at moving organizations, at moving people inside their organization, at leading from behind, leading with influence and uh, a persuasion because very few people who are tasked with sustainability do so with a lot of authority. Uh, and so it's often, you know, really needing to build followership and inspiring action as opposed to just mandating it. And then communications, again, what we found is the difference between those who are, who have great intentions and those who actually carry those intentions forward into meaningful change um, is beyond just the strategy and the leadership capabilities, it's, it's a, a very successful and effective way of communicating the need for change and the path to change and communicating along the way. Um, uh, and so, you know, we talk a lot about the power of storytelling. Um, you know, data is important and it's important in anything uh, like sustainability, but the fact is data itself um, isn't, isn't going to move the needle. In fact, you know, we've had the data that we've had I mean, it's gotten better, but we've, we've known this stuff for decades now. The, the, you know, what's changing is the story behind it. What is the story of a future where we don't act? What is the story of a future where we do act? And not only a societal future, but an organizational future. And, uh, um, and what is the role of the participants in that story? So there's a lot of really meaningful work in uh, teaching our students how to really change the way they communicate about the need for change and the change itself, and uh, and we found that to be very successful. So aside from um, aside from these, if you will, courses, um, there are also other uh, pillars in the program. Um, you know, we do some in-person experiences, uh, uh, both at the beginning, the middle, and the end of the program. And then at the end, there is this, what we call the capstone experience, which is really a capping event, but it's, uh, it's something that builds throughout the program. And it's, uh, each student gets to choose what, uh, uh, what capstone project they, um, they, they, they want to bring. Because frankly, all of our students have brought things that are either very direct and personal to them or something they're dealing with in their current workplace. And this is an application of all the learning into kind of a real, uh, a real project. This isn't theoretical. This is something you're actually doing. Here um, we see one of our former students, uh, Tim Trepser, working in the kind of the broader event uh, uh, world of you know, conventions, sporting events, 
uh, hospitality and uh, and who as this capstone project chose a, a very ambitious uh, basically waste uh, waste diversion program for uh, one of their facilities there the uh, the the stadium for the Atlanta Falcons and uh, um, and the convention center uh, that surrounds it so that was uh, you know certainly one example of a um, again a very meaningful program that's actually now moved forward in very meaningful ways here another one of our students Denise uh, actually who worked for ASU and uh, in the healthcare education space and really looking at the role of sustainability in advancing um, uh, the space of health education and, and where health and sustainability uh, combine and how that um, merges into a um, basically a healthy, more prepared workforce, especially in health professionals who are going to be at the front lines of dealing with things like you know, climate-related uh, uh, events, etc. Um, yet another one of our students, again, you, you can see here the diversity of the students we have in their, uh, in their sectors of the economy and the types of roles. Here, uh, Pratik, uh, who likes to be called Pratt, um, you know, coming from, a, again, a large financial institution uh, from the, the financial side of the house, actually, really looking at how to leverage the strength of finance and of financial instruments to make a stronger case for sustainable uh, practice in, uh, in American Express's core business. So that was also a very interesting capstone. Um, and then yet here, uh, I think our, our last example um, of one of our students uh, working out of Nigeria, his home country, um, a country where you know, things like poverty and war and terrorism and uh, all kinds of issues are real, and yet finding that sustainability is a is a uh, an, maybe an, an unexpected pathway to 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 sustainable development for that country, and specifically built a capstone around a uh, resource innovation uh, sustainability network, um, uh, RISEN as we call it. Um, so again, very very exciting, inspiring project. Um, uh, and these are just four examples of many that we've had, um, but just to give a sense of, of the kinds of things that our students have been embracing for their capstone projects. Thanks, Bruno. Yeah, we've had great um, capstone presentations and projects through the program. The capstones are proof of what I've noticed and that I think is great, which is that EMSL students engage in extensive one-on-one -on -one work with each of the thread leads. Um, your EMSL students have the opportunity to work on projects with a group of renowned sustainability experts, which would cost literally hundreds of thousands of dollars in consulting fees to the students or their organizations outside of EMSL. But with this degree, it's included in the cost of tuition. There are weekly faculty lectures and talks from numerous world-renowned sustainability professionals, such as these leaders shown here. If students can't attend the weekly lectures, they're always recorded, so students can view them at a more convenient time for them. My faculty during coursework, are there some good relationships formed with your fellow students during the International Immersive Session in Amsterdam? You know, there, there really was, and it, it was it was quite expe quite unexpected um, because, you know, I I really entered the the international immersive kind of with a with a chip on my shoulder. I really didn't understand the value. Um, within you know 24 hours of being there, everything suddenly clicked because you know here we were with 15, 16 other uh, you know leading professionals. Of course, the four um, Jedi masters, as I call them, leading us all forward. And and throughout the international immersive, we were able to put real world examples to the test with Phillips and 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 for biz and all these amazing companies and what I got out of it really more of a selfish aspect was it is I would think about our problem in a particular lens or an idea versus when we talk about it as a group everybody had a specific area of expertise they all looked at the same problem differently and that's where all of a sudden the light bulbs and the connection points within my brain were made because while I would look at it a very systematic a very you know structured point you know um, Denise would not. Denise looked at it completely differently, and and Pratt looked at it completely differently. And I was like, "Holy cow! I guess you can, you know, take this problem, you can spin it around, 
and the light will reflect different ways depends on how you look at it and that's what radiates with with different people as far as how to how to make the changes so that was my biggest my biggest takeaway was it uh, away from it and um, some great relationships is now I think you know ten months after um, we graduated and Pratt and I are still talk every couple months um, to um, to see about what opportunities we have going on um, I met with I, I talked with Denise um, probably a month or two ago about, about future opportunities and we as a cohort still have you know monthly chats just to kind of stay connected um, so I, I spoke with Tim about three months ago so despite my best efforts to you know kind of hold up in my little corner of, of, of Washington DC you know I still feel a need to, to reach out to them and and just further establish those those relationships and really lean on them um, and also they, they lean on me for for my area so I was not that was a breath of fresh air for me coming into it thank you so Mike so much Mike appreciate that there are some other benefits to our program structure that really I think differentiate us from others one of the best things is that the program is only 13 months long so students can earn a master's degree without a long-term investment of time um, all of our students begin and end at the same time and no cohort will ever exceed 30 students, which is probably why um, you know, they build such strong relationships. Our first cohort started in January of 2014 with 15 students, all of whom graduated. Our second cohort started this past January with 23 students. And our third cohort will begin in January of 2016. There has been a lot more diversity in our students than we originally expected with this degree program. As mentioned earlier, age ranges in both of our cohorts were mid-20s to mid-60s. Work experience and educational background widely differed. Most students entered with a bachelor's degree, but many already had a master's and one actually had a PhD. Many of our students are entrepreneurs, but also represent large corporations like Republic Services, Bayer, American Express, Cisco, and many others. We have graduates and students who work in the governmental, nonprofit, and educational sectors as well. And our students come from everywhere. Our graduate students have come from around the US, as well as from Canada, Nigeria, Japan, Abu Dhabi, the UK, and MSL. Our students have the opportunity to learn from different viewpoints and from students in lots of different types of careers, which they found beneficial, as Mike had um, expressed. Mike, can you talk about the career development opportunities that have come up for you through EMSL? Yeah, sure, certainly. Um, ever since I entered the program, I really haven't applied for um, a position. One position has moved us across the country. The other position put me in, in in an organization to where I could really make some some changes on a national scale so so both those opportunities li literally came out of nowhere and what I noticed throughout my career was you know I really felt a calling to help the smaller organizations because you know for every for every Walmart and Cisco and American Express and Bear they have a supply chain that's 10 to 15,000 units deep and each of them each of those layer um, suppliers have another layer so there's a whole small echelon of mom and pop shops that are that contribute to national brands such as Dell so when Dell promotes that that you know their their reductions here or their efficiencies there it, it that commitment radiates through the entire organization way beyond their name and most of the smaller organizations just don't have the bandwidth they don't have the money they don't have the bandwidth they necessarily don't have the concept of sustainability you'll learn when you come out of program you spend just as much time explaining to your friends and family and the people you need. You're like, so what do you do? Oh, I'm a sustainability consultant. You kind of get this, they get this funny look on their face. Um, but you know that the EMSO program gave me the strength to really step out on my own and a complete leap of faith. To as you know, I really want to help small, small organizations. You know, really enact small changes, but th that has an immediate focus on their business. That really gives them the leverage points that they can see a, a, a quick process, an early win to really you know get them on board have them drink the Kool-Aid and from there as we all know it, it balloons out and of course and then the efficiencies just grow and grow and grow and grow and that's ultimately where where we want to be the program gave me that skill set and the self-confidence to do that otherwise I don't think I would have thanks Mike I know a lot of our um, alumni and current students have some pretty interesting stories about so Bruno can you share some of those 
Sure. Uh, yeah, there's probably not enough time here, but uh, let's uh, you know let's let's just give a, a, a couple. So here we have John, um, and you know as you can see here, I mean John came into this program as a very accomplished, you know, professional, having uh, been you know founder and uh, uh, president, then you know <laughs> uh, also chief sustainability officer of a very successful tea company. I mean China Mist. Is found, uh, you know, in in many many outlets uh, across the country, and here what you see is John again having already uh, accomplished so much. You know, came into this program looking for new pathways to bring more sustainability into uh, his tea business, uh, both in terms of how the product is is grown, the product is made, the product is packaged, the product is distributed. The product is consumed, and um, and I think you know in in John's case he's brought you know all of this knowledge and experience and success that he's had, um, and and been able to to create a multiplier effect that I think has surprised even him, and as you can see here he says you know it's extraordinary, uh, this has gone well beyond I thought he thought you know this is gonna give me an extra little edge, but uh, um, uh, that that's been very encouraging to to work with John, and then here we have um, another student, uh, uh, very different. So uh, at a di the different time in his career, um, uh, who came to us actually from the from the education side of the industry, and uh, also trying to combine education with actual sustainability practice in a community college environment. Um, and and what Thomas really had to say. Um, I think was this idea, which I think surprised even us, is how much peer learning took place, and and you know Mike just just mentioned it that not just learning, but really a, a notion of almost peer mentoring, peer uh, network that that has uh, very much continued to this day, and um, you know I think that's been a testament to the diversity of our group where, where so many students brought different cultural experiences, educational experiences, industry experiences, functional experiences that uh, uh, they brought you know, a lot of wealth and richness um, and, their, uh, and a willingness to, to, to share it openly with the rest of the group that it's really added um, a, a whole extra dimension to the program that I think has been really unique. Thanks, Mike and Bruno. Now let's get down to the details so that we'll have time to take some questions. This 2016 program timeline shows the flow of courses and the dates of the in-person workshops. During the online portion of the program, there's never a specific time or day of the week that students must attend, which makes the program generously flexible for full-time working professionals. Please contact me directly if you would like a detailed, more in-depth course calendar. So we've shared with you how this program will provide you with leading edge leadership skills, access to an elite network of peers and experts, and global experience to help you position your organization and yourself to meet and exceed your goals. You may be wondering now what this may cost. Actual program costs for each semester are published right before the semester begins. So it's impossible to give you an exact quote for the degree, but the estimated 2015 cohort costs on this slide should give you a good idea of what to expect. All books and room and board for the in-person workshops are included in the program's fees. Airfare is the responsibility of the student. The, other, um, the only other fees that apply will be an application fee, which is $70 for in-state students and $90 for out-of-state students, a graduation fee, which is approximately $50 to $60, and cap and gown fees. If you'd like to see a detailed breakdown of the 2015 cohort costs, reach out to me and I'll email you a PDF with the full details. EMSL scholarships. We are excited to offer competitive scholarships of up to $15,000 per student for those who fully completed an application by November 30th, 2015. That includes letters of recommendation, essays, and transcripts. For students who have applied for the scholarship and who have been admitted to the 2016 cohort, scholarship recipients will be notified by Christmas. The School of Sustainability also offers a limited number of scholarships that you can find on their website. 
But another opportunity for you to obtain scholarships and or grants is to do a general internet search. There are literally thousands of scholarships that you can apply for if you're willing to put in the time and, and energy and dedication to apply for them. Federal student loans are available for graduate students who are citizens or residents. These typically pay $10,250 for, uh, for each of their full-time semesters in our program, which will be about $30,750 in total. You may be able to receive a higher amount of student loans in the form of federal graduate plus loans. Plus loans require a good credit history, though. To apply for student loans, you can go to fafsa.ed.gov, where you can fill out the free application for federal student aid, or FAFSA for short. Our school code is on this slide. It's 001081. Some organizations offer tuition assistance as a benefit to their employees. So if you're one of those lucky ones who have this benefit, there's so many questions that you should get the answers to before applying to EMSL or really to any other program. So please contact me and I'll work with you to ensure that you ask the right questions and to help you make the most of your tuition benefit. Mike, do you have anything more to add? Um, not really. I mean, it's it's... Don't look at this just as a financial um, burden or cost or impact because it goes way it goes way beyond this. I mean, this is really not just an investment in yourself and investment in your career, but it, it ultimately is an investment in your community, in your company, in your organization, your neighborhood, you know, your cities, and the world. Because you know, the change you make will radiate far beyond what you can even conceive possible. And you know, Jen's always there. I mean, I can't tell how many times I pinged her. And I was always bothering her and texting her because I was really unsure about the program. And I had just these little nuggets of, of questions. But, she, you know, she was always there and a smiley face and always kept, yes, we got that. And, and so, I mean, don't hesitate to reach out to her or anyone else at the EMSL team because they will be brutally honest with you and because they want you to succeed. That's the ultimate goal is, you know, not just to fill seats, but they want to they wanna fill seats with people that will make changes that will radiate beyond just the school. And to me, that was that was one of my key jumping points going into the program. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much, Mike. It was a pleasure yeah. working with you, and it still is. So Every there day. are lots of ways that you can gain more knowledge about EMSL to determine if the program is the right fit for you. I can invite you to um, a private EMSL LinkedIn group that we have set up. I can connect you directly with faculty um, or with graduates like Mike or current EMSL students who can share their perspectives on the program. So please reach out to me directly if you'd like additional information and program materials. Our website has a detailed application checklist. But if you're thinking about applying, please contact me before you apply so I can assist you through the process. I sincerely need to add. Yeah, I mean, you know, I guess my, my main call to action is you know, this program was designed specifically for people who either are not thinking of going back to school or thinking they can't somehow find the time or, or the energy to go back to school. Uh, so one is look through the material and talk to Jennifer about, so what is it actually like to, you know, work in a demanding full-time job and full-time life and do this program? Because it was specifically designed for people like you. But it's also... Um, uh, you know, something that should scare you a little bit because that's the idea is um, is to really prepare you to do something, you know, bigger and more meaningful going forward. So so if you're if you have that inkling, if you have that kind of that impulse, but then you quickly talk yourself out of it, don't talk yourself out of it quite yet. You know, talk to talk to Jennifer and talk to the rest of us about, you know, what is it really like? Because it's um, as Mike said, you know, it's intense and it's short, but uh, coming out of it, um, it's so empowering that uh, I, I really re recommend it to those who, uh, who are ready and, and kind of feel that calling. Questions from our attendees. While we're gathering the questions, I know there's one there. Well, we'll gather some more. I'd like to hear from Mike and Bruno. When you speak about EMSL to others, what are the types of questions that people ask you? So let's start with Mike. 
Yeah, that's fine. Um, in fact, just, just last week I had a conversation with a prospective student, and he was really, his large concern was um, availability to connect with the professors. Um, he had done an online program before. It was very separated between himself and the faculty. Um, he wanted to know, you know, how much one-on-one -on -one time he would get. He would get the professors, and and how much, you know, real-world experience would he get? Would he get from them and be able to connect with them on 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 a personal basis? And I and I gave you know example after example, that you know, yes, I mean, obviously they're not there all the time because they have full-time careers and 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 they're passionate about sustainability. But yet they're still there. They're still there. I mean, I I, I told him I said I've spoken to all of them, at least once in the last 30 to 45 days. Um, so, I mean, even after graduation, those are still relationships that, that carry on, and um, they really work with you. I told them, I said, you know, they'll, they'll take the time, they'll grab a phone, they'll grab a, a, a Skype call to really answer any questions and go deeper into a subject. And I think that was, was his biggest um, concern going into it, and I'm anxious to see how he, how he pans out in the next couple months with, with admissions and everything going forward. But that was a, a real recent example I just had last week. So I'll keep you updated. <laughs> Bruno, how about you? Yeah, you know, I get to, spe to, to speak to, to a lot of uh, prospective uh, uh, students for this program and, you know, get lots of questions about different things. But two, I think, that I'll just generally categorize. One has to do with, again, the can I, can I truly do this? Um, I've not met a single person yet that had to be sold on the, is this for me? Like, you know, I think once they really get to understand what the program is, what's in it, what's not in it, how we've structured it, honestly, it's th this, you know, really strong impulse of, wow, I so want to do this. But then the question quickly comes, can I? In some cases, there's, there's some financial questions that are obviously very real, and I won't, you know, really touch on that. But the, again, this idea of I don't have, you know, 12 or 15 or 18 hours a week of my life to somehow carve out for something like this or, you know, I'm just too busy or, you know, can I really make this work with my, with my, with my job or my, my family life? And so I, I often get questions around that. And, you know, I mean, it is absolutely a commitment. And again, uh, I think we, we, we make it intense enough that you certainly never get bored but um, the fact is we specifically look for people who are um, frankly who feel like they're too busy and and who have too much going on uh, because part of we, what we do is actually we leverage that we leverage their uh, their busyness and we leverage all the work they're already doing and help shape it in different ways and so the answer to that question is yes Absolutely. It doesn't matter really how busy you feel you are today. This program is very much um, designed for people like you. The second question I get, you know, and again, it comes in all different forms, but it, it has something to do with the marketability and what do I get with this and what does it help me do later? Uh, and again, there's plenty of ways to answer that depending on where the person is at that time in their career and kind of where they feel they're going to next. But the few things that I always say is, one, ASU has built an excellent brand in the, uh, in the application of sustainability, not just in the teaching and the science and the research of sustainability, but nobody in the world has a better brand than ASU in terms of, you know, if you've learned sustainability at ASU, you know how to do sustainability. You don't just know sustainability. And so I think coming out of a degree in sustainability from ASU, uh, there's nothing better in this space and, and many across certainly the corporate sector, the government sector, the nonprofit sector. Um, it's also, I think, uh, uh, you learn a set of skills and a set of, uh, of uh, domain expertise that are, that are going to be invaluable across a variety of jobs. So even if you're not going for that chief sustainability officer job, but you're really trying to do what you're doing now or something you're already doing or wanting to do that isn't core sustainability, but where you feel sustainability is the way you want to approach it. Uh, it gives you a lot of different pathways to advance your career in that direction. So um, anyway, 
those are two main questions that I get, Jennifer, and I think uh, uh, they, they're, they're very relevant ones, and I think this program really addresses them well. Thanks, Mike. Um, did you want to add on to anything that Bruno had just said before we get to yeah, um, yeah, I, I I really wanted to add on to the to what Bruno was talking about as far as the time commitment and and you know that that it is a very real concern that a lot of students um, have going into I as well because I literally I just started a job like two or three days before the program kicked off, um, but what a lot of students realize is is once you get into the program, it's really not work. I mean, you're not really you're not you're not studying programs that you have to. You're not studying subjects that you have to. You're studying subjects that you want to. So, I mean, you stay up late at night reading because you want to you want to find out how to do better the next day at work. You know, you 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 know participate in every discussion question just to see how your responses will lay out on other ones. How your ideas and 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 ideas and concepts will radiate through the cohort. So, it's, for me personally. It wasn't work at all. I mean, it's an absolute complete blast. Um, it didn't feel um, laborious at all. I wasn't like, oh my gosh, I have to stay up till midnight and do homework. It's like, oh, I get to, do, I, you know, I tell my wife, hey, I love you, honey, but I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go work right now. And it was an absolute blast. I mean, I got way more out of it than I put into it. And um, so yeah, don't don't let the don't let the the labor of oh, it's a it's a 13 month graduate program scare you because trust me, you, you use it every single day. It doesn't feel like work when you're doing it. Um, also, as far as the market, you can use this degree everywhere because it gives you the four strategic threads to take leadership in whatever path you want to go to. Entrepreneurship, corporate America, nonprofits, governments, you name it, the tools you get out of this program enable you to fit a need wherever you are. Um, I mean, it, without a doubt, because you know, if you pull the, the word sustainability out, everything's still there. You know, basically, you're you're learning how to be a great leader, how to enact change that the world needs. So we're, you don't have to have the sustainably title to really put this 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 degree to work because it will work without the word. Thanks, Mike. Now we'll go ahead and um, answer some of the questions that are in the chat. Hi, uh, this is Sarah Crago. I'm the instructional designer for the Executive Master's of Sustainability Leadership, and I will be reading your question. Um, Jen, the first question that we have uh, is requesting a clarification about what the cost, what is included in the cost of tuition in terms of um, airfare and on-ground activity for the immersion sessions. Can you speak to us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so this question comes from Kevin um, Gazar. He's actually our thread lead for leadership, and I know that he, this is a question that he's been asked, so that's why he's asked it again here for everybody's knowledge. So the cost, um, it does include, so all the site activities that we have, the, the two workshops in Tempe in January and then again in January when you're finished, as well as the in-person session in Amsterdam, all the costs associated with anything we do during that time period of the workshops are paid for through the through your, through the fees of the program. So there's not any additional cost to you um, during the like for example the hotel stay during that time. Um, you know your meals are paid for. Any tickets you need travel to and from different events that we go to during these days are all covered by your by your fees. So. There's not additional cost there. One thing that you will have to pay is if you're out of Arizona and you can't drive here, then you'd have to pay for your airfare to Arizona um, for in January and again the following January. And then you'd also have to pay for your airfare to the Netherlands um, in, in June. So that's something that students are responsible for. In addition, it, some students like to stay additional days. So some students, you know, when they graduate, want to stay for extra two or three days with their family. Those nights will not be covered. That's something that you would have to, you know, pay for on your own, as well as the meals and everything for dates that are outside of the workshop. Um, and a lot of people in, in, in a lot of our cohort actually travel together before and after the Netherlands trip. Um, and that's also on your own. But anything we do, during the immersive sessions are covered um, no extra out-of-pocket expenses.
Great, thanks, Jen. We have one other question here um, about what type of master's degree is granted by the program. Is it an MA or an MS, or is it something else? Yeah, that's a good question. I actually get that question quite a bit. Um, you do receive a master's degree. However, it's not a traditional Master of Arts MA or Master of Science MS. Our graduates use EMSL to notate their credentials, much like an MBA or MSMA, MPA, um, various other ones. If this was not an executive program, for example, our students would use MSL. Okay, great. Thanks, Jen. It looks like that's all the questions we have for right now. All right, and we've run out of time, so we do need to wrap, wrap this up. If you have additional questions that weren't addressed today, please review the FAQ on our website and contact me directly at 480-727-3097 or at jennifer.l.griffin at asu.edu for all things EMSL related. I really want to thank you for joining us today and also thank Mike and Bruno for their time and I, I hope I'll be speaking